Hi, my name is Andreas Nicolescu, and today I'm going to show the NetFab workflow for a 3D metal printer. The environment that we're going to use is the brand new concept laser environment that has been made available with NetFab 2021. Let's jump right in. What we're seeing right here is our brand new M2 Series 5 build envelope and we're going to add a step file of our part. As this is a step file, we can add a preliminary tessellation to the part so that we can use this for displayment options and if later needed we can still retessellate it to a higher resolution. Next we're going to follow our context menu here on the right and start from the top left to see okay we need to apply an orientation and we're going to use our orientation module for this. In the tool we can see the different settings that we have and we're now going to uh, let the system search for a good orientation and see the support preview right away. The matrix that we're going to get uh, contains all the different orientations based on the input criteria that we have applied and allows us to choose the one orientation of that we think that is best for our part. Okay, now that we have our orientation, let's take a look at the support. Here we take the Create Supports button that brings us right into the support module. In here we can directly see, okay, there are quite many areas that are displayed in red that signify, okay, this is where we need support. Supports can be added using different ways. I prefer using automated support script that can be easily adjusted. If the support script still needs optimization, we can add additional supports to the areas that we think need a little bit more. So far, so good. I'm quite happy with the combination of regular block supports and tree supports that we are using right now. So leaving the support module brings us to the next step. That is the build process simulation that we're going to access with the start build simulation button. While NetFab simulation is starting we can talk a little bit about the preparations for the simulation typically we need to assign the materials and select process parameters process parameters basically match the exposure parameters on the machine so speaking of the machine we can also select how many lasers we are operating in our environment here we are going for the dual laser system so let's apply two lasers for this machine right here. At next we have to take a look at the build plate. We can define if we want to use build plate heating, the size of the build plate that is going to be beneficial when it comes to calculation times. So before we go on let's just go ahead and quickly change the part and the support to our aluminum process parameter and have a look at the heat treatment capabilities. And the last step before we go into the solve is the mesh preparation. So here we can apply how accurate our solve is going to be. The finer our mesh, the more accurate our solve, but also the more time it's going to take for calculation. What the software is going to do is a simulation of the entire build process and all the equivalent and following post-processing steps, such as build plate removal and even support removal or heat treatment can be included. So what we're seeing now here is a timeline at the bottom of the screen, the big green line. And by that we can watch how the part grows in every time step throughout the process. What we're seeing right here is one of the most important criteria for any feasibility studies. We're taking a look at the displacement of the part throughout the process. As we can see, we have different areas of the part in which the support is working rather fine. We do not see any further displacement happening, but there are other areas that are mostly affected by the displacement 
and are possibly going to break away from the build platform or even from the support, such as the area right here in front of us that is colored in a red here at the bottom of the part. So what we can see right here is that the area in yellow and red has been displaced around about one millimeter after the removal of the support geometry. If we go one time step back, we can see that here the displacement is not that strong yet. However, in the back of the part, we can see that there is displacement happening right at the bottom area of the support. If you take a look on the left, we see that we have other areas in our result tree available as well. For example, we can take a look at the global recoder status. Has the recoder hit the part? Has the support maybe delaminated? And has the part broken off the build plate? All of those things can be included as well. From a thermal point of view, we can also take a look at the hotspot or lack of fusion areas inside of the part. As the last step here in NetFab simulation, we want to create a warped STL or a compensation model. This should help us achieve a lower displacement in the actual build process, as the displacement is included in the pre-processing of the new model. With the compensation model being created, we can now come back to NetFab and include our simulation results with our NetFab project. This allows us to keep track of all the data that has been created throughout in the data preparation. And we can now also see the same displacement results that we have seen in NetFab simulation. We can assign this geometry with the colored displacement areas directly to the part and can then see, okay, these are the areas that probably need a certain amount of improvement in their support development, for example. Let's now also include the compensation model that we have created earlier in the process of taking this out of the folder where I saved it and placed it directly on the build platform. And now I want to place these two right over each other. So here, the gray one, the original model, and the orange one is the compensation model. And then we can see already, okay, there are a couple of deviations between these two. In order to see, okay, how big are those differences, I can take a look at the mesh compare feature that I have in the analyze ribbon, which allows me to compare two meshes to each other and see how NetFab simulation has created the compensation model. As we can see, the majority of those two parts are colored in green, which tells me that there isn't too much of a difference visible right here. But as you can see, especially on the outer areas of the part, we do have quite a bit of deviation that uh, is then pre-processed based on the displacement of the simulation results. The very last thing that is missing in our preparation is that we have to add the same support that we have on our previous model to our compensated model. We do have a very quick way to do that by attaching a clone support. So what the software is doing is basically comparing these two elements and adding the same support that we have on the first part so that we can also have it quickly on our second part without having to undergo the same data preparation steps that we have already performed. This is a great way to save time throughout the data preparation. The last step of our workflow is the export of our build data. So based on 
configurable machine configuration files in which at this point we can include the slice thickness of our geometry. We can now export both our compensation model, the regular block support and our voluminous tree support in the way that we are used to it. The files will be stored in a zip file right away and as you can see right here we both have the regular CLS, the S underscore CLS and the underscore S CLS for the volume support that is required to input in our CLWRX control software. Okay, this was an exemplary workflow for a 3D metal print based on the Concept Laser M2 using built environment here in NetFab 2021.